In the 1950s, Australia had a deeply felt sense of propriety. We were governed by the politics of niceness. Some things were nice, other things were not nice. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you in this decade, perhaps for the last time, decent Australian mothers tried to inculcate the principles of cleanliness, politeness, caution, and above all, niceness. Come along now. It's time for dinner. There are many things we all learned at Mother's Knee. We always used to leave a little bit on our plates for Mr. Manners. And Mr. Manners was a very important person in our lives, along with Jesus and Father Christmas. And my mother used to say to us, quoting the Bible, she said, be nice and people will be nice unto you. I don't know where that is in the Bible, but it's there. I can assure you of that. Anthony doesn't stop to think whether he is allowed to pick the flowers. But here comes Constable Brown. It's his job to prevent people from breaking the law. He must explain to them that the laws are made for everybody's good. The flowers in the park belong to everyone, but what if we all picked the flowers? There would soon be none left for people to enjoy, would there? This childish obsession with flowers often persisted in the mature Australian woman. The gladiolus of all blooms became the emblem of everything that was decent, optimistic, and above all, thrusting in Australian life. were so easy to wipe down with a wet X. <laughs> the gladi is a very complex flower. It's not as simple and adorable as it seems. I had a moment in my life when I was very disappointed in gladdies, having loved them since I was a child. Since I was, in fact, knee-high to a gladiolus. I found out, just by accident, from a botanist friend of mine that the, the gladiolus is a bisexual hermaphrodite. And to this day, I can't have them in the bedroom unless the light's on. You never know what they're going to get up to in a vase. 